Doctor, let's begin with you. Just describe uh, the value in trying to find a connection between D68 and the paralysis that some young patients have experienced. Well, thank you, Pim. It's important for us to determine whether or not there is a connection between this virus and the paralysis we're seeing in children, because if indeed this virus is causing it, the U.S. and the world would have to look at developing treatments for it and perhaps even vaccinations. Similar to what happened in the years of polio, we would want to ensure that this virus did not become more widespread or do more damage to more of our children. Shannon, I want you to describe exactly what is going on in the country right now and the kind of risks that parents with young children may face. Well, this virus is very widespread at this point. Now, in most cases, it's just causing a common cold, sniffles, runny nose, and congestion. But for hundreds, possibly thousands of kids, they are being hospitalized over this with severe respiratory issues, inability to breathe, um, wheezing, um, lips turning blue, where parents are having to rush their children to the ER. They're being hospitalized. They're being put in the intensive care unit, and it's very scary. And there is now this possibility, as we have seen the number of these infections rise, we are also seeing an increase in these types of polio-like paralysis cases, which Dr. Greenberg has look, been looking into. And there's past research that has found a connection between this virus and this paralysis. So now there's not only a fear of the respiratory distress this virus can cause, but that's also going to leave long-lasting paralysis effects where kids can't use an arm or kids are bound in a wheelchair or even in some cases unable to breathe or speak. You have a personal connection yeah. to this. Tell us what happened and most recently. Yeah, last week I found myself at the emergency room with my young son who's nine months old who was wheezing. I woke up that morning and he was breathing very heavy, wheezing, unable to catch his breath. I took him to the pediatrician. We were there for hours, couldn't get it under control, went to the emergency room, ended up having to be hospitalized. Uh, he did test positive for an enterovirus. We're not sure if it was this strain, um, but in the meantime, I met so many parents who were going through the exact same thing at the emergency room, in the hospital rooms of their children children struggling to breathe um, because of a respiratory virus. Dr. Greenberg, what kind of guidance would you give to parents of children who have these kinds of symptoms? What kind of questions should they be asking of their health, uh, their health supervisors? So the first thing to recognize is that enteroviruses are incredibly common. There are probably two to four million children a year who get upper respiratory infections, the common cold from enteroviruses, and they do just fine. Uh, this year we have seen a spike in children who are getting quite ill, as Shannon described. And in general, there is no specific treatment for the virus. It's supportive care. If you feel like your child is having problems breathing, please get them to their physician or to an emergency room for an evaluation. The most important thing is to stop the spread of this virus. And so as the public health departments and the CDC have been urging, frequent hand washing, using antibacterial soaps, antibacterial lotions in schools and at home is the key to preventing the infection to begin with. If, however, your child does become ill, I can reassure you that thankfully the neurologic complications, the weakness, the paralysis is exceedingly rare. Even in the sickest of children, this very scary complication is being seen in only a handful of children so far.